Good morning. Welcome to church. Thank you for joining us this morning. Jesus says in John 8, Very truly I tell you, whoever obey my word will see life and not death. I believe that sharing God's word, sharing the gospel brings life. And that that's what the Lord wants to do today in your life through this word. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the opportunity to be together in this way. Thank you that we can listen to your word any way we like. And that your word brings life into our lives. That your word is the light on our path. That your word wants to show us what life is all about, what you is all about, and how we can can follow you and how we can know you more and how we can become the people you want us to be. Lord Jesus, we, we pray for this message that, that you will use it in our lives, that you will use it to open our eyes for who you are and for what you want to accomplish in each one of us. Listen to our prayer, Lord Jesus. Pray this in your holy name. Amen. Um, to those of you that following our series through John will remember that two weeks ago we talked about how Jesus healed a, a blind man just outside of the temple, a, a man that was born blind. And, and how that whole story wanted to teach us to, to look for God in any situation. Um, God is working. And the challenge of faith is to, to open our eyes so that we can see him. Um, the story continues this morning. Uh, we are going to read John chapter 9, verse 14. Now the day on which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eyes was a Sabbath. Therefore the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He put mud on my eyes, the man replied, and I washed them. Now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he doesn't keep the Sabbath. But other asked, How can a sinner perform such signs? So they were divided. Then they turned again to the blind man. What have you to say about him? It was your eyes he opened. The man replied, He's a prophet. Verse 24. A second time they summoned the man who had been blind. Give glory to God by telling the truth, they said. We know this man is a sinner. Uh, he replied, whether he's a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. Then they asked him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered, I've told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? Verse 35, Jesus heard that they had thrown him out of the temple. And when he found him, he said, do you believe in the son of the man? Who is he, sir? The man asked, tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, you have now seen him. In fact, he's the one speaking with you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, for judgment, I've come into this world so that the blind will see and those who see will become blind. Some Pharisees who were there with him heard him say this and asked, what are we blind to? Jesus said, if you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. That concludes our scripture reading. Jesus, in this, in this um, scripture we read, are putting us in front of a decision we have to make. Uh, for those that are blind, they can see. And for those who see, or think they see, they can become blind. And it's very clear that Jesus doesn't talk about physical blindness. He's talking about spiritual blindness. Um, those that are spiritually blind has a chance to have their eyes opened. Those who think they are not spiritually blind are maybe those that are really blind. But the point Jesus wants to make is that there is a possibility that we can remain not seeing, remain blind. How? How is that possible? In this the scripture we read, um, 
we, we, we see four things that tell us why the Pharisees didn't want to see Jesus. I think the, fir the first thing that we've got to notice is that they don't want to see. No one is as blind as him who don't want to see. Um, the Pharisees don't want to see Jesus as the Messiah. They don't want to look at his miracles and say, this man was sent from God. Um, they don't want to see here is something new, something exciting. Here is someone that's really changing people's lives. And maybe that's the big sad part of this whole story. That those who were supposed to see, those who were supposed to know better, didn't want to see Jesus. They knew scripture. They knew the promises about the Messiah. But they were not willing to open themselves up to say, but yes, maybe Jesus can be the one. Interesting conversation Jesus had with this ex-blind man when uh, he went to look for him in verse 35. And Jesus, Jesus um, actually comes to him and Jesus asks him, um, do you believe in the Son of Man? Um, Jesus actually asked him, do you believe God who sent his son who want to save the world? Do you believe in him? And it's clear in his answer that he said, yes, I want to believe. I want to see. And you see, that's the difference. The Pharisees didn't want to see Jesus like that. This blind man who experienced Jesus' work in his own life, he said, yes, yes, I want to see him. You know, it's scary that we sometimes don't want to see God. We don't want to recognize how he is reaching out to us. We don't want to see the fact that he's the only God, the only one that can save, the only one that can open the eyes of our heart. Especially us that know the stories, especially us that, that, that hear this uh, year in and year out. It's possible that we come to a point in our life that we stop looking for him. You see, because that's, that's where the Pharisees were. And that's the second point why maybe the, the, their eyes were closed. Because they were very satisfied in the way that they were busy with their religion. They didn't need anything else. They were not open for change. Anything there. The main reason... They did not like Jesus. The main reason they were, they were threatened by who Jesus was is the fact that, that they were too satisfied in the way that they were conducting their own religion. If you look at it, the sad part is that um, the issue for them wasn't the fact that the, the big issue wasn't the fact that the man was healed. The big issue for them was that it took place on a Sabbath. Um, that was against their own interpretation of the law, that you can't do things like that on the Sabbath. That was because it was against their own interpretation of how the law worked and how the Sabbath was supposed to be celebrated. And Jesus challenged that all the way. Because religion can't go, uh, because religion is not about following rules. It's about being healed. It's about being enlightened. It's about our eyes, the eyes of our heart being opened. And to see the, the Savior, to see Jesus for who he was. And, and because Jesus didn't want to follow their rules or, their, or how they thought the rules were supposed to be, they, they said he was a sinner. And the sinner can't do miracles. So this, this can't be the work of God. Because God's not a sinner. That's what they thought. That's what they said. We don't follow the Sabbath like that. But we have rules that we follow. Rules with which we exclude people. With which we judge people. Rules that we want people to obey to be part of our religion out of our religious community and it's got always 
always we must challenge ourselves. The way we do our religion. Is people seeing Jesus? Is Jesus opening up people's hearts and minds and lives? Are people being healed? We must never think that the way we do it is the only way. The Pharisees didn't want to accept another possibility. They were too safe in the way they did it. They were too safe in their rules and their religion. They were too safe even to the fact that they thought, but God's got to work like this because this fits in in our understanding. And that's scary. That brings us to the third point. That, that actually what happened is they didn't want to let, they, they wanted to control the narrative. They wanted to control this whole situation. They didn't want to let go of control because um, the, the moment you acknowledge that you don't have all the, all, all the information, that you don't know, that moment you give away your control of a situation. And we don't like that. We want to be controlled. Even in our religion, we want to be in control. We want to know. We want to know the facts. We want to, we want to explain the facts very clearly. We want to tell people the facts. We want, to, um, uh, we, we want to try to change people's hearts and minds with facts we're giving them. And then we read in the story that these Pharisees couldn't understand what Jesus was doing because it was totally out of their frame of reference. Um, therefore, they had all these questions. Two, three times they asked this blind man, how did it happen? Tell us again. How did it happen? Explain it to us. Almost as if the people that, that were supposed to see, they are asking a blind man to show them the way. Unfortunately, what they knew, or what they thought they knew, prevented them from seeing Jesus for who he was. They actually say that. Uh, when they ask him, who did it? Who is he? And, and he, he, he blind man told him, oh, he's a prophet. And they said, no, he can't be a prophet. The implication is that he's not a prophet. We don't want another prophet. Because they knew. Prophets were those people that challenged people to serve God in the right way. They, uh, prophet were those that challenged people to get their, li their lives in line with what God wants, not with what religion wants. And the Pharisees actually said, no, he can't be a prophet. We don't need another prophet. Later on, um, he tells them, but it seems as if you want to be a disciple of his. Therefore, you have all these questions and the implication is, no, we don't want to, have to be his disciples. We don't want to follow him. We don't want to be taught by anyone else. We know. And actually, they didn't know. To be honest, we don't have all the answers in our faith. We can't explain everything. And our assurance cannot be in what we know, in our knowledge and our understanding. Because then we take away trust in Jesus. And if we want to follow him, we need to trust him. And we need to acknowledge that we don't know everything. And we are willing to walk behind him. That's exactly what Jesus asked the blind man. Do you believe? Um, when, Jesus, when Jesus found him again in the temple, Jesus said, um, do you believe in the Son of Man? And he said, yes, I want to believe. Who is he? And Jesus told him, it's me. And he said, I believe. When the blind man talked to the Pharisees, he told them, but it seem, almost seems as if, if you want to be a disciple of Jesus. And they said, no. And what he's actually telling them, the only way you're going to know, the only way your eyes are going to be opened, the only way you're going to see is if you follow him. 
that's when you are healed. You see, when Jesus talked with them, talking to us, if we read this scripture, it brings us, brings us in front of a choice we've got to make. Are we going to follow Jesus or are we going to stay blind? Um, and you know, this choice is more than what you think it is. Because if we think we, we understand everything, and we think we've got all the answers, and think that we don't need more of Jesus, then we're in trouble. It's, it's also when we think that, that Jesus can't do something new. I, I know everything about him. And he, he, he can't come with, with something that's going to change our situation. Then we're in trouble. It's, it's when our, our religion are so stuck in rules and regulations and in a comfortable way for us that we don't open it up for new possibilities. Then we're in trouble. It's when our religion is more about following the rules than seeing people and having, having grace and reaching out and caring. Then we're in trouble. Then we blind. It's when Jesus becomes less important than the way we do religion, that we are the real blind ones. Therefore, we must busy ourselves with a few questions the whole time about the story. Do we want to see? Do we want Jesus to open our eyes? Or are we satisfied with what we have? Are there any room for improvement in our relationship with him? Or, or maybe we can, we can ask that differently. Do we really want to follow him on his terms? Uh, maybe there's something that Jesus wants to be that you are missing at this moment in your life. Maybe you want something more. Maybe you're tired of the way you're doing your religion and it's not working out. It's not bringing new life. It's not changing the way you think, the way you feel, the way the person you are. Maybe you want more. What choice are you going to make today about this? Going to follow Jesus? Or are you going to stay the same? Last two weeks ago, we said that faith is to learn to see how God is working. Maybe today we must say that faith is to ask the Lord to open the eyes of our heart and our mind for what Jesus wants to be and want to do in our lives. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we want to see you. We want to see Jesus lifted high. We want to see who you are and who you want to be. We want to see you work in our hearts and in our lives and through us in the world around us. We want to see Jesus in the life of the people we love, the people we care about. We want to follow you, Lord Jesus. Thank you that we may come to scripture and that we may believe that Scripture speaks to us and challenges us with those parts of our lives that we close up for you, that we don't want you to be part of. Lord Jesus, keep on challenging us with your love, with who you are, with who you want us to be, because we want to follow you. We want to see Jesus lifted up. Pray this in your holy name. Amen. We have opportunity to bring our offerings. What an amazing way to open our lives up for Jesus. And just thanks him. Thank him for who he is. May you experience the Lord's love and his mercy and his blessing through this whole week. May, you, may your eyes, the eyes of your heart, be opened by his love 
and his mercy to each one of you.